Say, welcome Hi. to Guyana. Welcome to Guyana. So this is the Toyota dealership. So we're gonna go into Toyota dealership and price a SUV. And we're gonna calculate the cost and what it would cost if the duty, all of the duties and taxes are paid. So let's go. Let's check this out. So I'm going in now. Morning. So I'm here to price a vehicle. So guys, if you ever wondered what a showroom, vehicle showroom looks like in Diana, this is what the Toyota showroom looks like. So they have the Toyota 4Runner, the Toyota Fortuna. This is the one that I'm considering getting because it has the capacity inside, but it also has all wheel drive and it has the roof rail that you could install a roof rack on and roof rack is what you would need to store to carry your solar panels and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna price get a price quotation on this vehicle the Toyota Fortuna and then we're gonna get a calculation of the duty and the taxes that we have to pay now in some cases depending on the business you operate if you have an agricultural business in Guyana you can be exempted from some of the duty and the taxes All right but this is the Toyota Fortuna it's actually a mid-sized SUV this is not the large SUV this is a mid-sized SUV Toyota Fortuna and it's one of the more popular SUVs in Guyana it's uh, of course right hand drive because we drive on the left in Guyana so and it's automatic it's leather seats And it has, seems to have, in this case, a push to start engine and the gasoline engine. So that is something to consider because although diesel is cheaper to operate, for example, you get more mileage using a diesel vehicle, you get cleaner burning fuel by using gasoline so this is something to consider when you're purchasing a vehicle for a business if you want to in fact you're, as a solar power company you probably want to consider a cleaner burning vehicle a cleaner burning engine and this one this hit this case it also has a third row of seats which you can fold down and you get more space for storage for in this case for transporting my electrical components so this is what I'm going to consider getting and it also will allow me to go off-road and, and to handle really remote, rough terrain in, um, in the country, in the countryside, in the Guyanese countryside. So it looks like this is the winner for now, but there was also the option of getting a, a larger uh, Toyota um, Prado in this case. This would be the Land Cruiser in some markets. It's a larger vehicle, but then it's also a lot more expensive. Same, in this case, it seems to be manual. But these are the options, right? These are the options, or you can get a um, minivan. So this is what we're going to consider getting. And we're going to talk with the salespeople, sales rep, and get a cost. Okay, guys, so I just completed the transaction. I just got a quotation right here at the Toyota dealer. And... I'm gonna show you what it looks like um, to get a new vehicle, a new Toyota Land Cruiser or a Toyota a Jimmy, which would be like a mid-sized Toyota SUV. And I have here the quotations. So for the Toyota Fortuna, which is like a mid-sized SUV, the total cost, the total price is $32,481,265. And of that, 
the excise tax is 14 million nine hundred and twenty four thousand five hundred and twenty three dollars the duty is three million seven hundred and seven thousand three hundred and seven dollars and the value added tax which is 14 percent VAT is three million three hundred three million nine hundred and eighty eight thousand nine hundred and twenty six dollars the vehicle itself the price of the vehicle is nine million eight hundred and sixty thousand four hundred and sixty nine dollars and so that is what it costs for the vehicle um, I just showed you the one in the showroom the Fortuna that I examined that I uh, describe the total price 32 million four hundred and eighty one thousand two hundred and fifty six dollars so I'm gonna take this over to the bank and we're gonna talk terms with the bank and then I'll describe for you what kinds of terms you can get for a vehicle loan like this say for a business the other vehicle for comparison is a diesel version of the Toyota Land Cruiser and I'll tell you what the price of that one was so the Toyota Land Cruiser, the Toyota Land Cruiser was thirty-six million six hundred forty thousand seven hundred seventy-seven dollars, and of that, the excise tax alone was sixteen million eight hundred thirty-five thousand seven hundred and seventy-nine dollars. The duty. Four million one hundred and eighty-two thousand and sixty-six dollars, and the VAT, the value added tax, four million four hundred ninety-nine thousand seven hundred forty-five dollars. The price of the vehicle itself, eleven million one hundred and twenty-three thousand one hundred ninety-two dollars. So that's how they got the total of thirty-six million six hundred forty thousand. $777. So that is what an SUV costs in Guyana. And you can see immediately that the vehicle costs $11 million, but the total price is $36 million. So we're talking about three times the price of the vehicle. Whereas in your country, in the US and Canada, you might be able to pay the $11 million, which works out to be about $55,000. In Guyana, that 11 million becomes 45, uh, 36 million, and that 55,000 becomes 160,000 dollars. So 160,000 dollars for an SUV. More later. Okay, guys. So let me wrap this up. Right. So I'm going to complete for you. Tell you how it all works out what it costs in terms of taxes to purchase a vehicle in Guyana and how you handle your taxes in Guyana so I just came back from the bank I'm just coming out of the bank so I went into the bank I showed them the quotations that I had and I was told that at this particular bank in this case Demerara Bank there's a limit of three million dollars on vehicle loans so they have a ceiling of three million dollars if you wanted to buy a vehicle in Guyana that is how much you can borrow from the bank and like I said the vehicle costs 36 million dollars most of that is duty and taxes the vehicle is 11 million dollars and the taxes are another 25 million so that is how you get to 36 million so the vehicle costs half the fact the taxes, the duty and taxes on a new vehicle, in this case an SUV, those duty and taxes are two and a half times the price of the vehicle. That's how you end up paying three times. You end up paying three times the price of a new vehicle in Guyana. And so they give you a list of criteria that you need to 
even begin to be considered for the loan. In this case, a business loan. So here's what they want to see. This is the bank would like to see from you if you want to take a loan to buy a vehicle for your business. They want your national ID or passport, your proof of address, your TIN, identity, tax identification number. TIN is tax identification number. The tax identification number you need to do business in Guyana. Anybody, in fact, every citizen in Guyana who wants to buy or sell something needs a tax identification number, TIN. So you need a TIN certificate. You need a driver's license. You need an income and expenditure statement for your business for the entire duration or for the last three years of its existence. You need a cash flow projections and you need the quotation which I just obtained from the dealership, car dealership. You need photographs of the vehicle and you'll need letters of reference or a letter of reference from somebody who can go for your character. So, this is all the information you need to take to the bank if you want to take a vehicle loan. And again, of that $36 million, the cost of the vehicle that is, only $3 million of it will be financed by the bank. So this explains why Guyanese think that vehicles are a status symbol. Because the government imposes exorbitant duty excise tax and value added tax on the vehicle which multiplies the cost three times so that it becomes out of the reach of the average citizen and then in addition to this now they've imposed a limit on how old the vehicle is that you can buy so while most people will not be able to afford a new vehicle most people would in fact buy these used or reconditioned vehicles that are imported from Japan which explains why there's so many of them on the road, so many cars that are 20 years old on the road, because that is what the duty and the, import, the, the importation duty, the custom duty, excise tax and so on caused. So the cause of having high, the cause of having old vehicles on the road is in fact the expensive duty and taxes that you have to pay. And now there's a limit on how old the vehicles are that you can buy which means that you're going to have fewer people able to buy vehicles the reason be being that there's a upper there's a lower limit to the cost of the vehicle in other words by prohibiting expensive you from purchasing expensive uh, inexpensive vehicles older vehicles they've now put more consumers outside of put vehicles outside of the reach of most consumers so that's the situation with vehicle tax in Guyana now like I said if you want to see more content like this click like and subscribe and in the new regime the new um, environment of Google and YouTube more value is being placed on subscriber count and therefore if you want to see this channel succeed I suggest you subscribe now if you haven't subscribed before click that little bell right that little bell in the corner that gives you notification join the notification squad become part of Rafaelito Nation and join us in this journey to prosperity because what we're really doing is tracking the impact of oil on Guyana in this season we're going to see how in fact Guyana becomes the richest nation in the world per capita through oil because because of recent discoveries because of recent oil discoveries the last ninth oil field um, discovered by ExxonMobil. Guyana now has the largest oil find in the world in the 20th, 21st century. So this century, we have the record for having discovered the most oil, new resource, new oil fields, new oil wells 
in the world, which now makes the oil reserves per capita, because we only have 750,000 people living in this country, it makes the oil reserves per capita one of the largest in the world, in fact, the largest. We have the largest oil reserves per capita in the world. And what we want to do is to figure out how that affects the average Guyanese, how our lives change, how rapidly our lives change. And what I've done in this video is to show you how it is today, how it's... Let's track the progress that Guyana makes in the next few years. Later!